Hey everybody, hi, how are you? It's Cheryl here. Uh, thanks for stopping by my YouTube channel today. Um, if you're new to my YouTube channel, welcome. My name is Cheryl Horvath. I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator in the Pacific Northwest, hanging out here in Woodenville, Washington. Um, today I have a fun project to show you using the Peekaboo treat bags and the Cottage Rose um, stamp and die set bundle. So um, I think you're really gonna like what I have to show you. So I won't wait any further. Let's turn the camera down and get started. Okay, so first things first, um, I just wanna quickly show you in the catalog where this bundle is. And this is actually available in a suite called Abigail Rose, or it's just the bundle um, which is discounted 10% when you buy the stamp and the dies together. It's $53 versus buying them separately. You save 10%. If you buy the suite, you're going to get the dies, the stamp set, the ribbon, which is very cool. It looks like this. The ribbon looks like this. It's really nice. You can even stamp on this ribbon. Look. Isn't that fun? Um, so the ribbon comes with it, which we're not using in our project today. Um, oh, and the designer series paper, which is the second star of our show today. And it looks like this. For those of you who are new to following me, um, I keep a cheat sheet of my designer series papers. What I do is I print out, this is just a piece of heavy cardstock. Um, I have a template that I do in Word where this is just, I type across the top the name of the paper and then I put each of the colors listed that are, because when I'm designing, I look and I say, oh, that's one of the grays, which gray is it? Well, it's Smoky Slate. And so you can tell very quickly that, you know, we've got early espresso in here, crumb cake, um, Smoky Slate, and very vanilla. So this is my cheat sheet for how I keep track of my DSP papers, and then this is a 12 by 12 sheet protector. And that's what I store my DSP in. It's not super thick, let me show you what they look like. I get these, I got them on Amazon. And you get 25 in a pack. And they're not exactly 12 inches, they're 12 and 3 eighths, I think, by 12 and 3 eighths. They're for uh, scrapbookers that do the 12 by 12 scrapbook pages. But they, if you just have one package of DSP, it's perfect. And then uh, I keep them in, I have a, a rolly drawer um, on the floor that I stack all of my DSPs in. And I put this in the front. So that's just a little side note for you guys. Um, you might be able to squeeze in a second pack. It'll be a little tight, but um, at any rate, so that's the paper we're going to use today. The packages that we're going to use today are called Peekaboo Treat Bags. And those I have for you on page 141. That, sorry, 140. And you get 10 of them for $6. So they're really quite economical. It's not, um, not a bad price at all. And you get five white and five of the crumb cake. Okay. So that is what we're going to do today. And let me just show you um, the project that I made using the cottage rose. And I'm, I'm going to go through a couple of things with that particular stamp set as it relates, coordinates with the paper, because there's some tricks to know about it that I learned last night along the way. So this is the project that I created. It's actually a food safe bag, but I chose to put um, bath salts in it. So this is just full of, um, I got also on Amazon. These are Epsom salts. It's a soaking aid. It's just, it's a bath salt, but it smells like eucalyptus. And so it smells heavenly. I love the fresh smell of eucalyptus and then um, so I got a whole pound of this I was using this for other treats last year and then I decided it would be fun to try to put some salts into this 
little pouch and use it as a thank you or you could attach it to a birthday gift and have a little birthday wishes sentiment on here. And then for the back, because I like to make sure that I have sensitive skin and I have to be careful which which bath salts, I, I don't use bath salts very often. I've tried this one and it, it's great, but I always wanna put the ingredients and then obviously the directions for someone to know how to use it. Um, Cause I, I would hate for someone to have an allergic reaction. But so we're gonna use this linen thread, the cottage rose paper and the stamp set, and then the peekaboo treat bags to make this cute little pouch with some bath salts in it. I'm gonna also show you one that I did, actually I did a bunch of them for my class coming up this Sunday. And um, these are filled with mini M&Ms. So I just did a little tag from the, um, this is the TaylorMade tag dies. So I used that. What I did was I printed um, with my Word, Word document, I printed everybody's name out how, just like this, how I wanted it, and then um, I ran it through the die cutting machine with the tag die, and so that's how I got the names on it. And then the um, paper is the new designer series paper for the brights. So it's the six by six package. The bright six by six designer series paper, but it's the new pattern. So it's got the floral prints and the dashed lines and the polka dots. So I love the new prints and the designer series paper. So this is what I use to create all these awesome little treat bags. Now the twine is not Stampin' Up twine because I ran out of the black and white um, twine that I think was the Playful Pets combo pack twine. Um, so I have the red that goes with it, but I ran out of the black and white. So I used um, some black and white baker's twine that I had on hand. It's not Stampin' Up, but... And then for these cute little sayings, this is a retired stamp set that I got from my friend Gail. And I just thought it was perfect since these are for a kit making class that I we are cut out to be friends. I just thought it was cute. So this is another way to use the little treat pouches. You can actually fit quite a few of the mini M&Ms in here. I wouldn't recommend anything chunky because they're not, um, you wouldn't be able to fit much in it. Like I tried to do, here's one with almonds. I tried to do one with the little, um, like two or three of the, the chunky, um, oh my gosh, the name's escaping me. They're Hershey, like little bars, um, Anyway, I think you guys know what I'm talking about. Those are too fat, too wide. To, they did not work in here well at all. So peanuts, M&Ms, um, the minis, like I said, worked perfect. I had a, a bag of Rocky Road trail mix, and that kind of was almost too fat also. But the other thing I thought of, which I thought would have been really cute also to make a little, ah, a thank you. Let's see here. This is not a gift card, but it's a, an example of the size of a gift card. So these, um, uh, the Ziploc on these are actually really strong. You have to pull them apart. But you could decorate your treat bag and put a gift card in there. And that, and that would be cute too. So maybe I'll do that later. But for now, let's get going on the this project we're going to do. And I did use uh, just, this was so easy to color, pale papaya, light and dark, and this is soft sea foam, light and dark. Um, you could use a darker green if you wanted, but I just wanted something very subtle. Literally seconds it took me to color that, and I'll show you how fast it is. Okay, so to get started, let's start by stamping. I have my stamp set here, and um, I always keep a little Ziploc of my extra parts and pieces in here in case I ever want to use them. I buy the 5x7 um, magnetic sheets that have the adhesive backing to them. And then I keep those inside my stamp set so I always have my dies near my stamps. 
Okay, so I'm gonna set that aside. The stamp we're gonna use right now for this one is the large floral. And then we're going to cut that out. So we'll, when we get to that, um, I'm going to use my E block for this. Okay. And then I keep a stash of pre cut papers on hand to grab very quickly. Oh my gosh, there's, my hair is everywhere. <laughs> because this is a large stamp, I'm gonna flip it over and I'm gonna go directly ink to stamp this way. And I'm using Memento Black. That looks good. Just gonna go straight down and give it a good press. Beautiful. Set that aside for the moment. And this is my homemade chamois kit. It's um, it's just a, uh, this is not Stampin' Up. This is just a, um, a chamois cloth like what you get at the parts supply store or auto parts store. Again, I got these on Amazon. I got a kit of them, and it was a giant, big, giant towel, and I just cut mine into three pieces, and then I fold it up and put it in a stamp case, and uh, it's always right here where I need it. So that's an alternative. I, we do sell the thick chamois. I have one. I'm just going to be honest. I don't like it. That's why I went to... Um, I went to my own version. I just like a thinner chamois. Number one, you can, I'm digressing, but you know, the, the thick one that sits inside the stamp case that Stampin' Up! sells, um, is great because it does have cushion. And so when you push down, it kind of jumps up around the stamp and gets everything clean. And I can do the same effect by folding this up. But if you're using your Stamparatus, it's hard to, um, take that out and use it as a towel. I don't know, I just, I like to be able to grab this and wipe as a towel or use it just in the case. So just, just my two cents. I'm not trying to dish on Stampin' Up, I'm just saying. Okay, so that's that. So now we're gonna take our pale papaya. Actually, I think we'll use petal pink. I was worried the pale papaya was going to be a little too dark. Um, so we're going to do a little test because now I can't remember. Yeah, and I think, I feel like pale papaya was a little too orangey for me. So I got out my petal pink, light and dark. And literally, this is how easy this is. Anywhere there's like a little... Um, dashed line and, or, you know, detail of the flower petal. I'm just wisping, kind of like that. I'm not even bothering to, well, I'm staying inside the lines where in regards to the outside, very outside petal. But um, as far as the inside petals go, I'm just giving it a quick once over and maybe a little focus there in the center. And if you wanted to go a little bit darker, you could just leave it like that if you wanted to. Um, you can add a little bit more shadowy detail. And if you really wanted to go over the top, you could full out color the whole thing. But I was going for simple, something light, light and airy. Like that, and then I'll put these away. And then I went with the soft sea foam, light and dark. Oh, I didn't put my cap on from last night. And again, I just kind of accentuated the vine lines, the vein lines, I should say, the veins of the leaf. 
not coloring it all in and I don't intend to. It's meant to be very loose. Just a little splash of color is all we're looking for. Just like that. Come in with our dark. If you wanted to color the stems, you could. This would be really pretty if you could stamp it on um, some watercolor paper and do watercoloring of it. I thought that would be really pretty. So here's, I didn't do any, anything with those, so I just did a little bit here and a little bit here. And if you timed me, <laughs> I'd be done with in less than a minute, I'm guessing. Okay, now I'm going to take the coordinating die for this. My um, big uh, Stampin' Cut and Box Machine is to my right, right here. I like it over there. I'm not going to grab it and pick it up and put it down the center because you guys, I think all of you know how to die cut, but um, I will show you this though. This is the new magnetic plate. It was so popular that it's already out of stock and on reorder, but I just want to show you how um, it doesn't jump around or skip or anything. You can actually move it on the plate just like that and it stays in place, it stays put. So I was, before this machine, I was a real lover of this post-it tape. I would, I was, I was post-it taping all my dies down. But with the new magnetic plate, it holds it in place just like that. Carry it over to my die cutting machine. Just check one last time for placement. run that through and so now we have this beautiful die the next thing we're going to do while we have our inks out and die cutting is um, the sentiment and for this one I'm going to use happy birthday um, no you know what I'm going to change it up I'm going to do friends forever and then, so now I need to decide if I want to use a tailored tag die. Will it fit onto this? No. But it will fit on this one. It's just a little bit wide. The other option we could do is this is the new um, Stylish Shapes die set. And it would fit nicely on there, I think. It's too long for that one. Let's let's get some ink to it and see. So I use the Smoky Slate ink on the sample. And let's see, I think I'm gonna use my my G block. Hopefully my head's not in the way. Nope. Okay. So I'm going to ink that up. Give it a press. I'm going to do another one in case I want to test out which die I want to use. By the way, these chamois can go in the washer. Um, I just I don't usually wash mine. I just put them under warm soapy water in the sink Every I don't know once a week probably if you do want to wash them just be careful what you wash them with because I Don't know what the ink's gonna do the ink that's in here. I don't know what that's gonna do to your laundry So I don't want to find out the hard way Okay, so let's see oh Yeah, that's gonna work just fine. Well, it might the stitching might cut into the D of the friends a little bit. So there's that, or did I, what did I do with that tag die? I feel like that's too fat for it. I wished, 
I really wish this one worked, but that's too small. So play with what you guys have and worse. Oh, you know what? This one might work. Oh yeah. Bingo. That's the one I want. So I'm going to put this back. I'll use that some other time. These are really popular though. A lot of people are using these stylus shape dies. Okay, so we're gonna cut this one out. So let's go do that. I could get my mini out, but um, my big shot or my big guy is right here, so. I usually only use my mini when I'm not at home. So, all right. Okay, set those aside. So now we have our two components here. Set those right there. Now we're going to get fancy with some paper and I think I'm going to do um, the same design. But while I have this out, I want to show you guys something. Because it took me a little bit to figure this out last night. Um, this die here. I could not figure this out for the longest time. I'm like, okay. This is all individual pieces. And... It matches that die right there, actually like this. So it cuts out that one. It cuts out all three of these, let's see, like that. So it cuts these out. Um, it doesn't cut that out, but then there's all these other little pieces and I'm just thinking, what in the heck? I don't know how to use this. So you can use it in two one of two different ways. You can put it on um, a sheet of paper, just plain white paper. And die cut it and it will cut out every single piece, individual. Every single one of these would be cut out individual. And then you can go back and you can stamp on the larger flowers that we have stamps for. But I was thinking there's got to be more to this than that. And what you'll find is if you go to this piece of designer paper. Let's see if I can find a full one. That's not cut. This guy right here. At first glance, this doesn't look weird at all it just looks like very pretty designer paper right but every little component is detached from each other and so <laughs> that's so that you could die cut them out and so this goes on there just like that and it die cuts every single piece and the package the ziploc bag of the little extras i had has all those pieces in it because I didn't I didn't use them last night but all these little die cuts you can use to place individually on your card so you've got leaves and small pieces stems so that's I thought was very cool and you can either color those leave them you know uncolored for kind of a black and white feel to your card but there's look at how little that piece is they're just tiny teeny tiny um, that's why I have them in this little bag so we're not using that one today but we are using a few of the other ones that cut out filigree like this so I thought that was super pretty um, so we're gonna do a couple of those but we're not gonna do this particular die today we're going to do um, uh, 
uh, this guy, we're going to use these two. So we need to cut these two out in white, which I should have done before, but I'll do right now. And I'm going to use this scrap if I can. Yep. Perfect. Run these through. Okay, so I die cut these out, but I'm going to show you what they leaves behind. So you can... Now I'm going to finally throw this away. <laughs> you can use these um, internal pieces too. So it does cut everything out. I'm just going to grab my tweezers. Now the thing about this cutting board is it does stick into it pretty good. Look how pretty that is. I just love it. So set that there and we're going to use this piece here. Pop those out. If you were um, patient enough, you could die cut this twice, once in white and then once in a color and use the, the color ones and then glue them back in like a puzzle and you could do that. And this is just a Cricut, a Cricut tool for pulling stuff up that gets stuck. Okay, so now we are ready to choose the paper. Should we do it on a craft color? Yeah, why not? Let's do craft instead of white. That way they'll be different. And I have some smaller pieces here that I'm going to try to use up. So let's see here. This is what I used on the original design. So you can cut this in one big piece like this, or you can cut it into two smaller pieces like I did here, and then put like that. Maybe Oh, I kind of like this pattern with the craft. Let's go with this on the bottom and this on the this on the bottom and the top. So these are one inch pieces by three and three quarters. So I'm just gonna grab my trimmer, which I have right here, and I'm gonna turn it this way. I'm gonna cut two one inch pieces. And then these are going to be three and three quarters wide. Okay, so we have those two. So that'll go here and here. Oh, with the linen thread, that's going to look really good. So now I need to figure out what this piece, what color that should be. Um, maybe that one. I kind of like that contrast. Maybe a little too dark. That's too much like similar like the other one. That could be kind of fun too and the pink pulls in. Let's cut this just to see what this one looks like. Let's see if I have a different piece. I know I don't want that one. Is that too busy? Maybe. Let's cut this one. Let's cut this one and see. So that should also be, let's see, I want it to run this way. I think I want it to run this way. 
So it needs to be three and three quarters wide by, I think it's two and three quarters, but let's just grab a ruler and measure. No, it's one and three quarters, not two and three quarters. One and three quarters, like so. So that piece will go here. Well, maybe it's not contrasting enough. Where'd our flower go? This is what happens when you have a small desk. Is it underneath here? No. Oh, here it is. So I kind of like this. I'm having trouble. I'm having trouble with this up here. I'm thinking maybe we need some contrast, some dark. Huh. I wish I were live and you guys could tell me what you think. No. All right, we're going to cut a piece of this to see. We're going to cut one inch off the end. And then three and three quarters. Like so. I'm going to try something else here. I'm cutting up all this paper. Kind of bugs me that I do this, but I'm a visual person. I have to see it visually before I can commit. So put that there like this. And then the other piece. Is, oh, I guess I could do pink, too. So many choices. Now I'm getting myself confused. No. Could do that. I kind of feel like whatever's on the bottom needs to be on the top. So what if we did this? And then I've lost that other piece I cut somewhere in here. Actually, I don't think that looks too bad, do you? And then we'll have the light color tag come. I actually like that. Let's do that. Yay. Okay. We made a decision. That's half my, half my struggle is just figuring that stuff out. Okay. So now we're just going to lay this all down and I use my stamp and seal with my sheet. And I, and I'm using it specifically right now because this bag is going to expand and get bigger and so what you don't want is any loose edges on because when the main the minute it buckles this could flip up or whatever so you want to make sure your seal is all the way to the edge and so in order to make sure that happens i i run mine off the edge a little bit and that's why i use the silicone mat because it won't stick to that so I have glue, as you can see, around fully covering all four corners. Oh crap. And I glued the wrong side. <laughs> Darn it. Okay, well let's just throw this one away and cut another one real fast. And So 
that was one inch. by three and three quarters. Okay, let's try that again. So we wanna glue down the gray side. And that went on the bottom down here. Now I do have a little, because he went straight up to the edge. You want to make sure that glue is kind of tucked under best you can. If you do have some gum residue from the glue left over on the top, you can just continually rub it like that, or you can use one of these. And this is a, a gum, a gum eraser, like glue gum kind of stuff. All right, and this one's gonna go here. And we're going to put that one across the top. You wanna make sure that you have the right side up. You wanna have the plastic see-through peekaboo part showing. And press down all your edges really good so that when you fill this bag nothing will pop up and then we decided this right is that what we decided this one I think so okay or shoot or was it this one now oh, I can't remember you guys Let's go with this one. So I'm like, I keep going back to this print. I love that stripe. Okay. Center this down. Make sure you've got the same amount of border showing on each side here so that's nice and even. Okay. Next, we're going to bring in two little components. And the way I did this, oh, darn it. <laughs> I told myself, don't forget to do it this way tomorrow when you do your video. I was going to use my double-sided um, adhesive paper to stick that down and to make it easy, and I forgot. So I'm just kind of figuring out where I want to place this. And I think that's good. Um, and so this is what I did last night, was I completely glued this down on top of these, and then I pulled them up. But maybe I can, maybe I can repeat the, what I did last night without a problem. This is another one we want to make sure we get adhesive around all the edges. So the silicone mat really does, whoops, really does come in handy for this part. Because otherwise you'd be on this paper or on, or on your work surface making a total mess. Now you could use wet glue. Um, I wasn't brave enough to try wet glue with this, so I'm just getting all the little gummy things put back in underneath. Let's bring this back in and bring that up a little bit. And so the glue, which is on my fingers, the glue on the back of this floral is going to hold down these white filigree pieces. I have so much glue on my fingertips right now. Everything's sticking to me. So I think I want to do like this. Bring this down just a little bit. Okay, we're going for it. Here we go. Put that down. And then get rid of the extra gummies.
And then I'm going to grab, um, you could use this glue, but I just recently invested in this glue, which is Stampin' Up! And it's a fine tip glue. It's got this little um, sharp pointy thing that goes in your nozzle when you're done so it doesn't ever get um, gunked up. So then what I did was, I still had glue everywhere. Then what I did was I just pulled these back because the stems are glued down under the floral base, but then I just pulled these back and I dabbed some of this glue on there. And you can't really see what I'm doing, but trust me, it's there. And then I'm gonna just set this down. Give it a second to adhere. This is why the uh, adhesive paper would have probably been ideal instead of this messy glue part. So that use the palm of my hand so I keep my fingertips clean <laughs> let's do the same thing over here do as I say not as I do don't forget to use your adhesive double-sided adhesive paper for this it's easier It's taking a minute to stick to this plastic. There we go. Okay, now, I didn't fill it till I was done. So let me show you how I did the bow. I wonder if it's not gonna stick to this plastic. Did it stick to? Not really. It didn't really stick well to the plastic. Could be a design flaw on my part. I love what we chose on the paper, so. So I'm gonna wrap this around um, twice, but because I want it to be a double-sided bow, a double-strength bow, I should say, I'm gonna measure just once like this and cut. And then I'm going to do a double strand. And this makes it so that the bow is actually double also, not just a single bow. Because you could wrap it around twice, but then you'd still have a single strand for your bow. And I want a double strand bow. So what I do is I take my thumb and I put it about how much, how much width I need to be able to tie the bow with. And then I place my thumb about where I want the bow to be. And then I wrap and tie. So we're going to, right about there is where I want the bow to be. Now you can do one of two things. Hmm, that's kind of a short end. Um, you can use a double uh, retractor tweezers and pop that in there. I didn't leave myself much of a tail on this side. And it acts as your third hand as you hold it. Oh, I didn't put the tag in. Let's try that again. So it acts as your third hand and holds it while you tie. And all I'm doing is just sliding it under the bow, under the actual bow itself right there, the nut right there in the center, the knot. Then I'm going to take my tag and the bottom end of your bow is what you want to string it through from the back to the front. Just like so. Then you're going to take your bow and tie. And remove your tweezers. 
And then here's your bow and you're going to fluff it a little bit. Fidget with it. Like so. Now this end is quite a bit shorter than this end. And I don't mind it, but let's just lop a little bit off. Okay, so here's, I love how this turned out, you guys. So here's our finished package. Um, the one thing we didn't do yet was the instructions for the back. So I had one printed, yep. And I used the stylish shapes on this. This is just regular copy paper. But what I'm going to do is just rough cut this out so I can get it through my dye machine and throw this away. Then I'm going to take a piece of, actually let's use designer series paper instead of, I used the smoky slate before but See if I have a piece here. Let's use this. So we're going to run using our stylish shapes tag dies or dies. I don't know if it's a tag or not. The big one and then the little one. So let me do that real fast. Actually, I can do both at the same time. Okay, so here's our big and our little, but it does shake the it does shake the desk with the camera on it when I use the big shot. I keep saying big shot when I use the die machine. It does um. It pops it into this paper pretty good. That's why I have to use this tweezers to get it off. Then we're just going to mat this on there like that. I think that's pretty. Um, let's use this since I have it out. This is a different formula glue, by the way, than the regular Tombow Mono. It's like a clearish. It's, it's like thinner. Verdict's still out on if I like it or not. I just got it, so. Okay, now we're going to do the trick again where we want to make sure every outside edge is covered with adhesive. Like that. Bring our bag back in. Center that on the back. So, and then we're going to grab our Epsom salts or whatever bath salts. You certainly couldn't put a bath bomb in there, but um, there's all different kinds of bath salt brands, loose, loose bath salts that you could use. Now I brought a scoop with me. What did I do with it? Oh, here it is. So I'm just going to grab just your regular all-purpose scoop and because the bow is not tied down it's you're not gonna hurt the bow at all when you open the bag so I'm just going to put my fingers in there kind of get it opened up good and dump in about two scoops should be enough for maybe two baths. <coughs> oh, that stuff's strong. Okay, and then the trick is you want to open the bottom a little bit to let it fall down. Then you can seal this up real nice. And isn't that sweet? Friends forever. Bath salts with instructions on the back. 
so pretty. This would be this would look so pretty on a package also. If you had craft paper packaging and then you could bring in the coordinating ribbon or even white paper packaging, coordinating ribbon to tie a bow and then this would be like your tag on the package. Wouldn't that be pretty? I love it. I'm so in love with this paper. It's very vintage. And I'm not usually a vintage person, but I just, it's like a, it's like romantic or something. I don't know. So get rid of all the little adhesive goobers that are left behind. But do you see now how no edge, now that this is popped up and full, you've got, there's no popping up of any edges at all whatsoever on your packaging. And the same with this back here. So it's real important to make sure you fully cover all the way to the edge um, on your glue. Okay, so here's our finished product. Here's what I did last night. Here's a couple more that I did. By the way, if you um, shop at Safeway, they had... Um, mini, they had bags of mini M&Ms, the sharing size bag. I'm holding my hands up. It's about this big. I can actually run into the kitchen and show you. But um, buy two, get one free. So I needed to have at least two bags to, fit, to fill all the pouches that I had. So I ended up getting a free bag. And I got the free bag I got was the pretzel M&Ms which are more round, they're not oval, they're not disc shaped, and those do not fit in these treat bags. So just heads up there. Okay, what do you guys think? I'd love to um, get your comments, your feedback, um, if this was inspirational to you at all. Um, please hit that like button if you enjoyed this video, and don't forget to subscribe to my channel so you can see future videos as they come out. And um, if you're interested in any of these products, they're on sale right, not on sale, but they're for sale in the annual catalog right now. Um, don't forget to use a host code if you want to order it. If your order is over 150, then don't use the host code. Either way, you'll get a little, a little something from me. I'd love to earn your business um, and have a new customer. Okay, that's it. I think I'm going to clean up my mess and head on to the next project. Thank, if you're still with me, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Take care guys. Bye.